welcome back to my channel my name is Katie this video I'm going to be testing out a load of new revolution products well most of them are new there might be a few things that they've had for a while here basically I just did a massive revolution haul I've got loads of stuff to try out so uh, I'm gonna start with concealers um, I actually have four concealers that I've picked up so first thing I got is one of the new shades of the revolution conceal and define concealer I got the shade C0.2, which is the lightest warm toned um, shade, I believe. And this is actually like a really good shade. I'll just do a little swatch on my neck. It's maybe like a tiny bit lighter than my um, skin tone actually, so I can kind of use this to brighten. So that's great, I thought I'd pick that one up. It is annoying that they don't have the um, new shade range in the bigger ones. Obviously I won't be trying that out today because um, I've tried the concealer and define many a time. I also got one of the new matte base concealers, which is like the little stick one. And I got mine in the shade C1, which I think is the lightest shade that they have. I don't know if they have a 0.5 actually, but um, I wouldn't have got that because it would have been pink toned. Do a little swatch of that shade on my neck. That one's definitely um, darker than the Revolution one that I've just swatched. I think the colour should work all right. It's quite similar to my skin tone, but I definitely couldn't like brighten or anything with that. And then I also got two of the new Makeup Obsession concealers. Um, they're just called the Mega Conceal, and I was not expecting them to be so big. They're like actually massive. <laughs> Very pleasantly surprised by that. Um, so I did get the white one, which is the shade 01, which looks like this. They supposedly have um, caffeine in them as well. And then I got the shade 03, so the third lightest shade. Uh, I didn't want to get the I didn't want to get number two just because again it was described as being quite pink toned I personally don't really like to go for things that are too pink toned so that's why I got the white one just in case this would be too dark but this one is actually quite light also the wand I have never seen a wand like that that is a peculiar shape I feel like that's the same sort of color as the um, uh, matte base stick that I've just swatched really maybe a tiny bit dark for me but you know what, I probably could get away with that colour. But again, I got the white, so even if it is a bit too dark, I can just put like a tiny bit of the white one on. I might as well just... I don't know why I'm swatching a white concealer. I mean, it's pretty obvious what a white is going to look like. So before I go on and do the rest of my makeup, I want to just try out these concealers on my eye area just to see the extent of the coverage. So I'll start with the uh, matte base concealer stick. So I have got a bit of discoloration going on in my eyes. I also have a bit of a pink eyeshadow stain. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just going to go and pop this under my eyes and on my eyelids and just see what the coverage is like and then I will wipe it off and do the other concealers. don't know how much to put on here. Okay, so that's that blended in and there is my kind of eyes side by side. You can see that that actually does have pretty nice coverage. I mean, you can tell the very obvious difference. The colour actually looks a bit lighter than I thought it was going to. Um, but yeah, I mean, that has actually got pretty good coverage. Not the most full coverage I've ever seen, but like pretty decent coverage actually. I'm quite impressed with that. I feel like it is sitting a little bit weirdly under my eyes. Like it's just kind of, I don't know, like it's just really kind of settling into the lines like both on my eyelid and under there like all concealers do that but I feel like this is kind of a bit crazy in terms of that <laughs> I'm gonna wipe that off and then do it the same thing with the makeup obsession one right so we're going with 03 from the mega conceal long wear concealer and just gonna do the same thing I actually quite like the doe foot even though it's a bit of an odd shape I kind of like it. This is definitely quite a warm toned concealer. Again, that is my non-concealed eye against my concealed eye there. I think you can see that it's got some pretty good coverage as well actually, very nice coverage. I feel like this one like sits on the skin a little bit nicer than the stick one. Like I just kind of like how it looks. It looks a bit smoother. I mean, it has settled into my lines a bit, but um, it's just one of those things I can't really avoid. But yeah, that looks like it's going to be a pretty good concealer. First thing I'm going to go in with actually is um, a oil. This is the Revolution CBD oil for dry skin. It is a nourishing oil. Helps soothe and calm skin, nourishing and conditioning. So yeah, this is one that's got CBD in it. 
For directions, it just says shake well before use, apply to face, morning and night for best results. So I will start incorporating this into my skincare routine. Uh, so it comes in this, it's got a little pipette, quite a decent size. This is like 10 quid though, so it's quite pricey. So I hope this is nice. So I guess I'll shake it. I have obviously like cleansed and moisturized before I start this video. All right, so we'll just, oh God, that's really runny. We'll just drop a bit of this. Mm, it's going in my mouth. <laughs> no, this is going all wrong. Okay, well that is very runny. Like, be careful with that. <laughs> okay, I think I've put a bit too much on here. Okay, so I've put way too much on and I now look like an oil slick. Feels really nice and moisturizing though. Like that just feels really refreshing on the skin. I'm gonna have to like fan myself to get this to go into my skin so I can actually do my makeup. Right, so I'm just gonna let that sit on my skin for a bit before we do anything else. While that's sinking in, I'm just gonna go off camera and prime my eyelids. Right, so I've just done a concealer and powder on my eyes. I did actually mean to get the cut crease canvas, but I completely forgot to put it in my basket, so I, I do not have that to use. But for eyeshadow, I have a new Revolution palette. This is their Shook palette. That's literally what it's called. It is absolutely massive. So this is what it looks like inside. These pans are actually quite small. I was expecting them to be a bit bigger, but obviously these ones are like a normal size, but it's all right. I think I could fit my brush into them, so that's all that matters. But again, you've got a beautiful selection of colors. Definitely a lot you can do with this. And there's a really nice mirror in it as well, and it's massive. It is a bit bulky, the packaging, so that might not be everyone's cup of tea, especially if you're traveling a lot. Although the mirror is really good for travel, I would have thought, because you could just, you know, put that on your little seat in the train and go in for it, I guess. Uh, we'll start with one of the neutral shades, I guess. So we'll go in with Idealistic at the top, which is like a light brown sort of shade. And I guess I use that as a transition and just put that kind of just above my crease. That was a good start. That shade was amazingly pigmented. I'm gonna go in with this kind of ready pinky sort of shade. This one here called Trouble. And I'm gonna put that under what I've just done. Why are Revolution always killing it with their eyeshadows? That again was just so pigmented. God damn it, Revolution. I'll never understand people that slag off Revolution eyeshadows. Like, they're so good. <laughs> I mean, we've only tried two shades. There, there could be some duds in this palette. You never know. I think I'm going to avoid doing a cut crease just because I always do them now. Like, I feel like I do them in every video. So let's see if we can avoid a cut crease today. I'm going to go in with this kind of dark maroon shade called Vibes. And I'm just going to make this a bit smokier. Put that in the outer third. Might bring it in a bit. Don't really know. Who knows? No idea what I'm doing, as always. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with the shade that I started with called Idealistic, just to blend that a little bit so it's not completely disappeared. See, there's a really like nice blue in this palette and I kind of want to use it, but I don't know now, I don't know. The purple, that looks nice, I... You know what, we're gonna go in for the blue because it is called in my name. It's called Aquatic, it's like a glimmery blue, sort of emeraldy color this one here uh i'm gonna get my finger and just pop that in the center seems like it's gonna be nice oh wow that was beautiful how does revolution do this how do they do it i think this eyeshadow palette was a tenner but i think it's supposed to be 15 pounds but then it's been on sale for like a tenner but like i mean that's still a really affordable price so I'm just gonna go back into some of the redder shades that I've used before to blend. I'm gonna go in with the white shade called Winter. It's got a tiny bit of shimmer in it, but it's not like a proper shimmer. I'm just gonna use that one to kind of blend under my brow bone. Just gonna clean up that outer corner. I'm gonna leave the eyeshadow at that. I'm really impressed. It's, an, it's another really good Revolution eyeshadow palette. I'm just, I'm blown away. Like all of those shades performed really well. Well, they all blended together really well. They were just so pigmented. Um, obviously I've only used like about five or so shades there. So 
Maybe not all of them are this quality, but but I mean it's Revolution, so I imagine that they probably are all pretty good. So yeah, I'm really happy with this eyeshadow palette. I'd recommend it. Not everyone might be a fan of the kind of bulky packaging, but I feel like the mirror in it is really good and really big, so I feel like you could use that to travel with. Like if I was doing my makeup on a train or something, like I'd probably bring something like this with me to just use as my mirror. So I've not got an eyeliner or a mascara from Revolution to try out, so I'll just quickly go off camera and do those and then we'll be back. Okay, so that's our eyes done. So let's move on to the base. And I've got loads of products for that. Uh, so I have actually got a primer. This is their Star Primer, which is a water gel primer with anise, anise, did I say that? Extract. And it's blue. So I was torn between getting this or the Oinks one, which is the uh, black one. Um, don't know why I ended up going for this one, but I just did. But um, they both looked quite interesting. I really don't like the smell of this. It's kind of licorice-y, and I really don't like the smell of licorice. The smell is just not the one for me. But the texture of it seems really nice. So I'm just going to pop this on all over, really. Why not? Yeah, it's got a really nice, smooth texture. Oh, I hate the smell, though. <laughs> Right, well that feels really nice, sitting on the skin really nicely. Feels like it's kind of absorbing quite fast, which I like. I hate it when you have a primer and it's just so sticky on your skin and it just kind of doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. I will let that sit on my skin for just a second before I do go in with any base products. In the meantime, I just sit here like... So... So the foundation that I've got from Revolution is the newest addition to their foundations and this is the Matte Base Pore Blurring Full Coverage Foundation in the shade F1. And I've watched quite a lot of reviews of this and I feel like people have generally liked it. I don't feel like anyone's been like, wow, it's my new favourite foundation or anything, but I feel like the reviews have been like mostly quite positive. So yeah, mine's in the shade F1. I feel like it looks a little bit darker than their other F1 shades, but um, I feel like it should be fine. Like I should definitely be able to get away with this colour. I think I'll get away with that colour. The undertones, I would say, the undertone's quite neutral, I'd say. Can't remember if they had the 0.5, but if they did, I wouldn't have gone for it anyway, because again, it's supposed to be really pink. I think I can get away with that colour, maybe like a, a tiny bit dark, especially if it oxidises, but I think I should be alright with that. I mean, knowing Revolution, they'll probably add in more shades, so... So right, let's just go in with this. I'm just gonna kind of put it straight on my sponge and just blend it into my face. So when it comes to like matte or like dewy finishes, I don't really have a preference. I feel like in a lot of the reviews I've seen, a lot of people said that it isn't super matte, like it's more kind of semi-matte. So I don't really mind either way because I kind of like matte and I like dewy. Because my skin's quite like normal, so it doesn't really kind of matter which one it is. the level of coverage that's given it's quite like a kind of mid to high medium I wouldn't say it's a full coverage but um I personally prefer kind of high medium coverage anyway um but yeah it's really nice actually I, I it's, um, it's reminding me a lot of the conceal and define to be honest it's got that same sort of kind of semi matte finish I, again I wouldn't say this is a super matte foundation but it's definitely not an oily one either it's more kind of like semi matte doesn't seem to be clinging weirdly to any areas. Sitting in my texture a bit, but all foundations do this. Wouldn't say it's doing it any worse than average. Um, yeah, actually, I'm quite liking this. Yeah, it's nice. I'll just get a little bit closer to the camera so you can see how it sits on my texture. So it's not too bad, really. I uh, actually quite like how it looks on my forehead. It's not like sat into my lines too badly there. I sat on my kind of pores around these sorts of areas a little bit though, but that's okay, it's just I can't avoid that. I really need like a pore mask or something. But yeah, I'm actually really liking that. That's a pretty nice foundation. Right, so back on to concealers. I think what I'll do is I'll use the two obsession ones under my eyes, so I'll just kind of go in with the 03 and then put a few little dabs of the white on the top. And then I'll use the fast base stick on like my blemishes. I think that's what we'll do. So I'll go in with 03 from the Makeup Obsession Concealer. Yeah, I definitely feel like, I mean the colour's not too bad, but it's a little bit dark. So I think it will benefit from a few dabs of white in there. A few dabs of white. Yeah, so I'll just kind of go in with a little bit of the white. 
on top of that. And that colour should work fine under my eyes. Just blend it in with my sponge. That's added some nice coverage. Sitting pretty well there. Doesn't look any creepier than your average concealer, but obviously it is going to sit in my lines a bit because that's just natural, but yeah, I really like that. Really like that for under my eyes. So we'll go in with the um, fast base, is that what it's called? So we'll go in with the matte base concealer. I'm just gonna pop a bit on my nose and just around my mouth where I have some more kind of blemishes. See that adds a little bit more coverage. Yeah, that's definitely added some coverage. I do actually quite like the stick. I know the stick has been a bit hit and miss with people, but I think it's added some coverage. I feel like I prefer the texture of it over the top of a foundation as opposed to just on bare skin. Um, but yeah, it's blended out really nicely and it's added some coverage, so I'm happy with both of those concealers. It's from this point onwards where I have a bit of an issue because I got a lot of powders. Revolution just kind of answered my prayers when it came to the powder situation. I've just really been struggling with powders lately. Everything just kind of looks bad on me. I'm struggling to find colours that are light enough for me, but honestly, I think we've found some here. Revolution have really, they've just, I don't know, they must have just been inside my brain or something. The first powder I picked up, they brought out very recently. This is their powder foundation, actually. Um, so it is, it is just described as a pressed powder foundation. And I got mine in the shade F1, which is the lightest one they have at the moment. It comes like this. And they, look at that colour. I think that colour is going to work for me. It's quite like, it's not like your normal kind of um, powder formula. It's quite like, it's kind of got like a pigment to it. So I think this is the sort of thing that's going to add, you know, coverage. I mean, I think it is actually meant to be used as a foundation, but I don't feel like I would use a powder just on its own for foundation, personally. Also got one of their matte base powders. Got mine in the shade P1, the lightest one. And these are actually really big. You get a lot of product in these, but yeah. That colour also looks like it could work very well for me, potentially. I also got two of the Bacon Blot powders that they brought out recently. I got the white one, and then I got the translucent one. I feel like the white one could work like under my eyes to brighten. Um, and then obviously the translucent one I could use all over. That's the two shades there, again. Then I also got a um, powder from Makeup Obsession. This is their large pressed powder. This one's in translucent. I have actually tried the white one of this before, but I found it was kind of just a bit, like, too white. <laughs> this colour looks more kind of suited to my actual skin tone. Don't think I'll use that one today though, just because it isn't like a new release. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of just want to try out the powder foundation really. <laughs> I feel like it might look a bit weird if I put too many different powders on. Actually right, I think what I'll do is I'll use the white bacon blot under my eyes and then I'll use the powder foundation on the rest of my face and I'll just have to try out the other powders in my own time. I will obviously at some point discuss them on my channel if they are new favourites. Right, so we'll start with the white bacon blot powder. I'm just gonna tap out any creases under my eyes and then We'll just set our under eye area. That's not too bad. Obviously it's white, but I wouldn't say that it's like too white. Like it doesn't look kind of like really weird and like a completely different colour under my eyes. Right, so we'll go in with the powder foundation now. Just using a big brush and I'll pat this over the rest of my face. Yeah, I feel like that is adding coverage. <laughs> Okay, well that definitely has got some coverage to it. I'm not so sure about the colour though, like, it kind of looks really pink, like, that's really odd, like, it doesn't look like it's going to be super pink, and then it kind of just looks really pink, like, compared to my neck, I feel like I look completely, like, two different undertones, like, I just see yellow and now I'm seeing pink. Which is weird, because normally their F1 shades are, like, more neutral or yellow, so I don't know why it's pink. Maybe I'll try the second light shade of that one because I don't know, like this colour maybe isn't the one, but powder has definitely mattified me, like it's added coverage and I don't feel like it looks horrible on the skin. It's not my favourite finish ever, but it looks pretty nice. Yeah, I'll just give you a closer up look at my skin. I mean, I like it. I might have to try a different shade though. 
But yeah, if you're looking for like a pressed powder that has a bit of coverage to it, then that's definitely one of them. Okay, so that's our base sorted. So let's move on to some cheap products. I picked up one of their new bronzers. This is their Bronzer Reloaded in the shade Holiday Romance, which I think was one of the lighter shades, but it looks like a really nice, beautiful baked bronzer that should work quite nicely on my skin tone. So I'm just gonna pop some of this through my cheeks and on my forehead. No issues with blending that, another really good bronzer, I'm on like a winning streak when it comes to bronzers lately, I've just, all the ones I've tried so far this year have been really good, and that is another good one, just a nice bit of a glow there, blended out really nicely, not too harsh, and good for my skin tone, so yeah. But I picked up two highlighters, but I've unfortunately broken one, I decided to get another one of the Revolution Pro skin finishes, because um, I have the one in Luminescence, which is like a light pink colour, and I actually really like it, so I thought I'd get another one of the lighter ones, this one is opalescent, as you can see it is all smashed, I just broke it. I did have a few reservations about this shade though, because it has got a lot of kind of like bronzy specks in it, so I was worried that that might look a bit strange on my skin tone like I've, I've just got like a kind of patch of um brown mixed in with the light shade i don't know i just i'm not sure but i don't know like if i can even use this anymore because it's kind of just oh oh all over myself and the floor so i think i'm just gonna leave that for now so we'll try out the other highlighter i got which is one of their highlighter reloaded and this is in set the tone which is like the icy white one and it looks really pretty and it's swatched really nicely that is it there, and it has quite a nice texture to it. All right, so I'm gonna go in with this highlighter and pop it all over. Oh shit, <laughs> that's nice. That's a nice highlighter. That's a super blinding highlighter. Actually, it's so stunning. And um, if you're into more natural highlights though, uh, probably not this one. This one's got a lot of pigmentation. At the moment, I'm kind of like alternating between like kind of more blending ones like this and then kind of more natural second skin ones, uh, which is why obviously I got another one of those um, skin finish powders, which is now broken because they're more natural ones, but they're really nice. But obviously I have days where I do want a blind. I want to blind the bitch. So that's really nice, super pigmented highlighter, if that is what you're after, and obviously this is quite an icy shade, but this obviously comes in a array of different shades for different skin tones. So I did actually pick up one of the new eyebrow pencils that they brought out, so this is just from Revolution. It's a precise brow pencil. I got mine in the shade dark brown. Now Revolution Pro has a kind of pencil like this, I think it's called like the microblading one, and I thought that the formula of the pencil was pretty good, but the colour just was so like reddish and like warm toned on me, did not get along with that colour, but I've swatched this colour and it looks a lot more promising, it doesn't look super warm toned. I love micro brow pencils, I tend to use them more so to just touch up my arch or any sparse areas in my brow after I've gone in with a gel. I think for this video I will use it to fill in my whole brow just because this is the only brow product I've got to try out. So I'm just going to run through them with a clear gel first. And they only actually have three shades of this at the moment, so there's not a lot to choose from. Yeah, it just it looks really similar to that um, other pencil from Revolution Pro. Yeah, it's just a pretty standard micro brow pencil, really. In fact, the colour looks quite dark, which is good, because my hair is actually kind of... Uh, it was black, it's starting to fade a little bit now, but I'm going to stick with black hair, so I don't mind if it is quite dark. So we'll just go in and, you know, try and fill our brows in. Try and not make them look like a disaster, but they probably will end up that way. Yeah, I normally don't fill in my whole brow with a pencil, but actually I have been doing it a bit lately, really. But normally I just use a gel and then use something like this to just define it a bit more. But we'll see what it's like all over. Okay, so that's what they look like filled in with the pencil. I think that's pretty decent. What I've been liking doing lately is if I fill in my brows with a pencil, I like to kind of just brush them like kind of upwards afterwards once I've just set them. Just trying to make them look a bit more fluffier. I feel like this pencil, I'd probably prefer it to use for touch ups as opposed to on its own like I actually find that I kind of prefer 
slightly bigger um, brow pencils if I'm going to just fill in my whole brow with them. For example, the Essence one that I tried in my January first impressions. I really like using that one in that same sort of way I've just done, but this one is a little bit bigger. So I definitely feel like I'd prefer this more so for touch-ups, but I feel like the formula is pretty decent. I mean, I'm not mad at the brow, like it, it's all right, it'll do. Right, so we'll finish off our eyes now. I'm gonna pop a bit of the uh, reloaded highlighter into my inner corner. I think I'm just gonna repeat the transition shades on my lower lash line. So I'll start with Idealistic again. Brown we started with. And I'm just gonna pop that in here. Then we'll go in with Trouble again, the red, and then I'll go in with Vibes afterwards, same colours we used. Just going to go off camera to do my bottom eyelashes. Anyway, to finish off, I've got four lip products, so that's a bit too many for one face. So I actually picked up two more of the uh, Pro Supreme Matte Lip Pigments. I have tried two of these before. I tried like a vampy red, and then there was like this kind of nude color. I didn't really like the color that I picked out. It was like a kind of orangey nude, which was not, it wasn't my vibes. But um, I actually, this time I got, I got the shade Visionary, which is quite like a dark pink sort of color. No, it actually looks darker in the tube. It comes out more of a kind of, nudey sort of pink maybe a bit deeper than your standard nude but it's still it looks like it definitely just looks more like vampy in the packaging uh the other shade i got i thought i'd go for something a little bit different this is a deeper blue called sailor which looks like that definitely don't feel like i have anything like that in my collection that's for sure I did however get some new lip products as well these ones have just been released these are there it just says on the packaging matte Matte, is that what they're called? The Revolution Matte Matte Lipsticks? Uh, they're liquid lipsticks anyway that they brought out recently. And I've got the shade Vow and the shade Featured. And one's a pinky nude and one's a kind of brownie nude. Yeah, that's actually a bit deeper than I thought it was gonna be. That's Vow there, quite like a rich kind of brownie nude. And then Featured is actually a bit more kind of peachy in tone, but again, kind of pink nude. It's not too dissimilar to the Visionary, actually. It's a little bit um, lighter and peachier. Mm, they also smell really nice. I think the color that I'm drawn to the most is Vow from their new liquid lipstick. So I'm gonna try this one at first, and then I think I might take it off and actually try the deep blue, because I feel like it might actually look quite cool with these eyes. So we're going in with Vow. Oh, this smells so good. It's be drying quite fast, but um, yeah, that's the colour there. Kind of applied it a bit dodgy, but um, yeah, I love that colour. That's really up my street. Um, so that's really nice. Um, it feels like it's drying down matte quite fast. Debating whether I want to let it dry down so I can see what it looks like when it's fully dry or take it off before it dries, so it's not gonna be a pain in the ass to remove. I mean, to be fair, it's mostly dry now, so yeah, I mean, it feels, still feels comfortable. It's a little bit sticky, but I feel like that might go away if I let it sit longer. Uh, it sits in the lines a little bit, but I kind of find that happens with all liquid lipsticks. It's just kind of what happens when you've got dry lips. But it seems like a nice formula, actually, but I am gonna have to take it off so that I can try out the blue one. I've not got it fully off, but off enough that I can try another product. So we're gonna go super daring and try out Sailor. From what I remember of these, they don't dry down completely matte, they're sort of semi-matte. But I don't know if that was just certain shades or if that's gonna be like all of them. I feel like based on the swatch, I thought it might come out a little bit patchy, but it actually hasn't, like the color actually is really opaque and I feel like I applied that better than the first liquid lipstick but um yeah I feel like oh god it's kind of going everywhere it's definitely not a smudge proof <laughs> all over my teeth I think yeah from what I remember from the other ones it doesn't dry down completely matte 
So I think what I'd do is put like a little bit of powder just on my finger and dab it over to mattify it. In fact, I might do that now. It actually looks stunning, like I like it. I kind of feel like it goes with the eyes in a weird sort of way. Like I'm kind of, I'm kind of actually digging this look now. <laughs> but yeah, that's everything tried. Obviously there was a few products that I couldn't try because obviously I had more powders, more lip products than I could put on one physical face. So sorry if that's a little bit annoying. But I'm just gonna go ahead and sort my hair out, clean up any mascara mess, and I'll be back. Okay, so we're back. And I've just realized I actually have one more product to try out that I completely forgot about. Uh, so this is the Revolution Glow Revolution Prime Set Glow Illuminating Face and Body Spray. And I've never tried anything like this before, really. I've only just recently actually got into setting sprays. I never used to be a fan of them. Um, but I've really been liking my all-nighter. Tried a NYX one in my first impression, that was quite nice. Um, this one had like really good reviews, so I thought I'd try it. Uh, so I'll give this a good ass shake before we do anything. And uh, shall we just spray this then? There we go. Mmm, <laughs> smells really nice. So I'll just uh, fan this into my face. That has made my highlighter pop like so much more, like it actually does make you glowier. Doesn't seem to have sat weirdly on my skin at all, so I actually, I like that. Um, I definitely feel like if you're wanting your highlighter to like take it to the next level, make that pop even more, this is pretty good for that. Doesn't seem to be like any weird blobs or anything on my face, so nice. I like that. Yes, so this is. The finished makeup look a little bit out there, but you know, it's always fun to experiment, I guess. Uh, I've had a pretty good time here. I found some really good products, I think. Revolution Shook Eyeshadow Palette, actually so impressed with this. I think it's really good, like the eyeshadow, you cannot deny that. There's some serious pigmentation there, blended amazingly. I mean, I'm really impressed with this. Another Revolution Palette that I think's excellent. It is £15. I don't know if it's still on sale for £10. Uh, so it's a little bit more pricey than your average Revolution um, eyeshadow. But I feel like you get so many shades in this and obviously you've got a huge mirror. So I kind of feel like it's worth that extra little bit of money. And the quality of the eyeshadows is so good. So I definitely would recommend picking this up. I really like the foundation. I think it's really nice. It's not going to be like my new holy grail foundation or right, anything. But I like the finish. I think the coverage is really nice. Like a solid kind of high medium. Which is exactly what I look for personally. I like high medium. I do. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I do like some full coverage every now and then. But um, I really like this. Didn't really have any issues with it sitting weirdly on my skin at all. So yeah, this is actually a pretty good foundation. I like it. Shade maybe is a tiny bit off for me. Really like the concealers actually. I think that they both have pretty decent coverage. Not the most full coverage concealers I've ever found. But like, you know, they're pretty damn close to it really. Didn't necessarily like how the stick one sat on my skin when I just put it on on my eye. I feel like it kind of blends a bit nicer and just kind of sinks into your skin a bit more naturally when you've got like a foundation on underneath it. But honestly, I actually think it's a pretty good for a stick concealer. Obviously, I didn't try all of the powders that I mentioned in the video, but I think the ones that I have tried, the finish on my skin, I actually quite like. I think it's done the job. Um, I feel like this, um, the powder foundation, if you're the kind of person that wants your powders to have a bit of coverage to them, then this actually does it. I feel like a lot of things that claim to be powder foundations are just kind of like powders that don't really add coverage, they just mattify you. But this actually does have some coverage to it, but it doesn't look super cakey at the same time. Like, it's definitely not the most flawless or natural finish, but like, it doesn't look horrible when like, you know, you've got like too many things on your face or whatever. I did find that the colour, I just feel like it's leaning a little bit too pink, which is a bit annoying because that's just not really what I want. Um, I don't really understand why, because I always thought that the F1s were meant to be more neutral or yellow. Um, so maybe I would actually try the F2, I don't know, I'm, I need to look into that a bit more, but hopefully they expand their colour range as well. White one works pretty well under my eyes as well, I don't really have any complaints about that, it did the job, but it didn't come out too white, which is nice. But obviously I've still got way more powders to try out, so I will obviously get back to you on how those other ones perform, because I'm always looking for a powder for my pale skin that works really well. Both the bronzer and highlighter, really nice. The highlighter is super pigmented and blinding, love it. The bronzer is super like natural looking, nice bit of warmth, nice bit of glue to the skin. Really like this bronzer, blended really nicely, not too harsh. Primer and the oil seem to work pretty well, but I mean, it's just kind of like, they just kind of go on your face. There's not really much I can say about them. I don't know if 
this is going to help my makeup last longer or if this is going to improve my skin or whatever it's going to do but I'll keep using them and we'll see. I mean I do really like this lip colour. I definitely feel like you'll need to mattify it with some powder personally. I mean that's what I do otherwise it is like a little bit you know sticky. Yeah so overall I'm pretty happy here. I don't feel like I've found any dud products or anything that's just not worked. Like everything seems to have worked pretty well. Um, obviously I'll need to try it out some more. I am going to do like a sort of monthly favourites kind of thing. Well not really, it's more going to be like a monthly product review where I just kind of re-go over all of the things I've tried in first impressions throughout March. So that will be up kind of like mid-April I would have thought. So that's it for this one, I'll see you in my next one, goodbye.